Malevolent Minions. This is internet personality Evangelist, and today I'm checking out Studio Series Core Class TerrorCon Freezer. Having seen Rise of the Beasts once, I think there may be screen accuracy in owning two of these, but I'm still unsure if the swarm of funny-looking little guys seen in the final act contained four-armed freezers. So hey, potential troop builder. Uh, not to bury the lead, but I only own one, and I wouldn't say you need two at full retail price. This video was sponsored in part by ToyHacks.com. Use the code NEWYANGELUS through the month of January 2024 for 15% off your order of labels and other paraphernalia using the code supports the channel. Supporting the channel feeds the machine. Starting off with robot mode, since it's the most linear and the one from the film, we've got a clear cousin to 2007's live-action Frenzy. From multiple eyes to multiple arms to positively dripping henchperson energy. Freezer is actually kind of sizable in hand for our core class, since they've got, you know, four arms and all that. The sculpt is definitely textured, and the coloration is very menacingly brown in that 21st century science fiction movie style that makes theatrical color palettes look positively explosive on screen when they actually feature primary hues amidst the sea of this. There are lots of visible ball joints on Freezer, you might think, does that mean he's articulated? You're, uh, yes. In fact, there's one on the base of his neck, so his head can look left and right, it can look up and down, it can even spin all the way around as long as the neck is pointing forward as it's supposed to be. In this more noble but unofficial configuration, it actually still pretty much works, which is uh, kind of cool, especially if you were to, uh, for instance, have two of this mold chilling out next to each other and you want them to look different. Uh, each of his shoulders is a ball socket joint, all four of them. Each of his elbows is a ball socket joint, meaning it has bicep-like swivelage as well, and that's all four of them. Each of his hips is a ball socket joint, all two of them, uh, and then his ankles, both of them are ball socket joints as well, so that the feet can swivel, they can tilt just a little bit. Uh, there's also a ball socket knee back here on the back of the digitigrade with a fair amount of motion, although it doesn't bend backwards too far. Uh, however, you're not going to use that one a ton because there's no hinge here. And boy, that's kind of a bummer given like how much else is going on, because without the hinge there, I find I very rarely use that ball socket joint for articulation as opposed to transformation. Also, uh, as much fun as all these joints are, I don't know if you can tell, they are just a mixture mashup of hand feel. Some of them are a little bit tight, some of them are just right, some of them are hella loose, and the interplay between all of them feels absolutely chaotic. So you want to be uh, equipped to thicken and tighten these ball joints. I haven't done that on Freezer for the sake of showing you how kind of oddly jangly he is. And uh, this enters into the transformations, unfortunately, as well. The first of Freezer's modes I'll move on to is their gun turret mode, and I like the ideas of the conversion scheme. Using angled tabs and slots to lock everything together is a great idea. Unfortunately, the tactile jank of many of the ball joints also leaks into the elbow tab connections that specifically build the standing base of this mode. It's fixable, but stock out of the box, it's a wriggly and tenuous experience to go through this transformation. Were it not for the tab slot fragility of the turret mode's legs, I'd be way into this. Hopefully some tab thickener treatment will get me to that horizon, because if they stay together, you can get some very interesting conjoined ball joint motion out of those twin bipods. I do like that Freezer's leg and ankle joints translate into very flexibly positionable handles for someone to hypothetically operate this turret. There's five millimeter pegs back there. But boy howdy, do those also just look like Freezer legs waggling around off the back of an otherwise decent alternate form. Moving on to gun mode, Freezer's limbs all reconfigure and reposition using different arrangements of tabs and slots after you deploy a dedicated central 5mm peg on the bottom. And these tabs and slots feel great! Whatever jank leaked into the turret mode has somehow been stifled for the gun mode on my copy. And thanks to the aforementioned stifled jank, Freezer forms into a fairly rock-solid handgun, albeit an extremely textured and alien-looking one that's kind of large and long. 
There's not much to say other than it does look more like a gun than a folded little person to me, and thanks to the solidity of the tabs and slots, pieces don't start undoing themselves when I pop the handle into a waiting 5mm port. It's those the little things in life, guns not disintegrating into a little person when you try to put them into someone's hands. It's, those, those make life easier. Our fourth and final mode is an engine cannonette thing that mounts specifically on leader class Studio Series Scourge's truck mode, and well, it's the gun mode with two of the arms unfolded. I had been hoping for more than two of the available tabs to be used in this integration, but hey, at least they hold better than the elbows in turret mode. What was I hoping for? I'm not sure. This is a humped mass with a gun sticking out, pointed at whoever's behind Scourge when he's driving around. It can't swivel, it's basically held on by two tabs, and it's not even attached to Scourge himself. It's attached to his own accessory that is itself hanging on by two tabs. I wondered if the movie would make this more exciting. It's healthy to think glass half full about unimportant things like this. It didn't, but hey, I still get to have half a glass of water. On paper, Freezer's a neat little experiment, a quadruple changing partner piece to a feature leader class toy, with two of the three alt modes being able to function without Scourge's presence. And hey, it turned out that all three alt modes are toy exclusive things trying to work their way around a screen induced robot shape. While the robot mode suffers for the lack of one bonus joint in the legs, on paper, I like the dynamic mix of options and creative means of arriving at each mode. Unfortunately, the jangly and uneven tolerances from ball joint to ball joint and tab slot to tab slot make Freezer more of an action figure kit than a complete experience out of the box. If you're willing to get in there and mod some tolerances yourself, my biggest issues get solved. But you've got to be dead center in the Venn diagram of being both a joyful toy modder and thinking Freezer's whole design scheme is interesting to you in the first place. So like, let me know if I'm all alone here. Anyway, this has been Internet Personality Evangelist, and with the release of Rise of the Beasts, one wondered about the long-term tale of the Freezer. Perhaps they would be a post-release troop builder sensation. Perhaps they'd be a funny figure I find in a drawer some years from now. Hasbro themselves have weighed in by creating a minor redeco with the absolutely sick name Novocaine in a later wave, meaning one can simply pick up the named pair for the sake of their toy shelf Terracon squad. As middling as I found this figure to be, I can't simply walk away from a name like Nova Kane with a K. Whatever path you may choose, even the one where you just don't buy this figure in any form, thanks to all my producers and supporters on Patreon and YouTube membership for constantly keeping me from collecting dust in a drawer.